This video is about different copper salts. Let's start with the copper nitrate. The two beakers that are shown in the center of the screen both contain nitric acid that's been uh, slightly diluted with water. Now we can take copper metal in this case, some uh, clean copper lathe turnings that I've gathered up. And we can drop them into nitric acid. And as we can see, slowly, the reaction begins. We can see gas being evolved and bubbling to the surface. And already, even though it's only been reacting for a few seconds near the copper, we can see a uh, bluish-green color forming already as copper nitrate is uh, forming from the copper and the nitric acid. If I move over one beaker, zoom out a little bit, we can see a little lump of copper carbonate in front of the next beaker of nitric acid. So we'll gather this copper carbonate and put it into the beaker of nitric acid. Follow these two reactions for a minute or two here. And in the right hand beaker where we added copper carbonate to nitric acid, we get also the blue-green color of uh, copper nitrate. In the 100 milliliter middle beaker, I have some uh, hydrochloric acid, again slightly diluted, and I have some copper carbonate here that I'm just picking up, and I will put that into the hydrochloric acid. We immediately get fizzing, and the formation of uh, lime green copper 2 chloride. In the 50 milliliter beaker in the middle of the screen, I have some 85% phosphoric acid, and in front of it, you can see the top of a little clump of copper carbonate, which I will now pick up and put in to the phosphoric acid. Again, there's significant fizzing. So, little carbon got loose in there, unfortunately, and it's floating around. And we can see that the copper carbonate has completely dissolved in the phosphoric acid, giving us a greenish copper phosphate. In the 250 milliliter Erlenmeyer flask in the center of the screen, I've placed 5% acetic acid, vinegar. I've added to this vinegar some hydrogen peroxide, and then I've put copper metal in the form of lathe turnings. This reaction takes place slowly, so I started it yesterday so that there would be the blue color of copper acetate 
today for me to uh, get video. I'll zoom in a little bit so we can see the gas bubbles evolving off the copper metal as it slowly turned to copper acetate. The hydrogen peroxide helps facilitate the reaction, much like when you're etching copper PC boards for uh, electronic circuitry. You might use hydrochloric acid and then put a little hydrogen peroxide in so that it attacks the copper a lot more aggressively. In this 250 milliliter beaker, I have 5% acetic acid, white vinegar. I have not yet added the hydrogen peroxide. It's in a cap here with an eyedropper at the ready. And I have a little lump of copper carbonate that I'm going to add to the vinegar. I don't know whether it shows well in the camera, but gas is beginning to bubble up from the copper carbonate. But if I give this reaction a little hydrogen peroxide, it may proceed a little quicker. Acetate reactions tend to be slower starting, but with the addition of the peroxide, we can now see that the gas bubbles are evolving more quickly. I may have to come back to this one before we'll see any uh, copper acetate coloration to the beaker. I'll come back to it. Revisiting the first reaction, which was diluted nitric acid and copper metal, we can see that the nitric acid has already consumed all of our copper. So I will add a little more copper in the form of uh, fresh lathe turnings. And we'll see that begin to dissolve. Gas is evolving already. See if we can get the copper nitrate blue color a little deeper. Our second reaction was again diluted nitric acid. But with copper carbonate instead of copper metal, we can see that the copper carbonate was completely consumed by the dilute nitric acid, leaving a very faint blue color. So I'm going to add more copper carbonate and see if we can get to a better color to the solution as the reaction continues, since there's still plenty of nitric acid in that beaker. Uh, it's already pretty much dissolved that lump, so I think I will add another one. And there it is. Fizzing steadily continues, and the copper carbonate is being consumed, giving us copper nitrate and the characteristic 
blue color. Our third reaction was diluted hydrochloric acid and copper carbonate. I'm going to add a little more copper carbonate. There's still plenty of excess hydrochloric acid in this beaker. We can see the remaining hydrochloric acid consuming the copper carbonate giving us the nice green color of copper to chloride solution. Despite the fact that I added a decent sized lump, the reaction is already nearly completed. Our next reaction was 85% phosphoric acid and copper carbonate. Again, the copper carbonate has been completely consumed, giving us a uh, green tint of copper phosphate. I'm going to add more copper carbonate just to try and get to more copper phosphate and to be able to see the color better. So there go a couple of the uh, larger lumps. There's still plenty of phosphoric acid in excess. The reaction is occurring quickly despite the size of the lump. It's already, as a matter of fact, consumed the copper carbonate, so I'll add a little more while we're here. There we go. We can see the greenish blue color of the copper phosphate a lot better now that it's a little more concentrated in the solution. Here's another look at the copper acetate reaction where we're using 5% acetic acid, white vinegar, some hydrogen peroxide, and copper metal in the form of the uh, lathe turnings in the bottom of the Erlenmeyer flask. This reaction proceeds slowly, but reliably. Our last reaction was again for copper acetate, where I used 5% acetic acid, white vinegar. I put in the copper carbonate, and then I added 10 drops of hydrogen peroxide to uh, help accelerate the reaction. We can see that the copper carbonate was consumed and we now have the faint blue tint of copper acetate. I'm going to add a little more copper carbonate to try and get to the color to show a little better in the video. There, there's some nice chunks of copper carbonate added. We can see gas being evolved and bubbling up in fine streams of bubbles.
liquid is slowly being tinged blue by the formation of copper acetate. Here's a, another look at that last reaction of 5% acetic acid as white vinegar, copper carbonate, and then a few drops of peroxide. Reactions had another two to three minutes. It's consumed a lot of the copper carbonate that I added, and we can see now the blue color is a lot more visible in the video as uh, a lot more copper acetate has been formed. Here's a view of all six reaction vessels at once, showing our results for this series of copper chemistry experiments. Starting at the extreme left, we have dilute nitric acid reacted with copper metal in the form of lathe turnings, giving blue copper nitrate. Second from the left, we again had dilute nitric acid, but we put copper carbonate in, in order to get our copper nitrate formed. Third from the left was dilute hydrochloric acid, into which we placed copper carbonate, and we have bright green copper to chloride as our result. Fourth from the left, we had 85% phosphoric acid, into which we placed copper carbonate, giving us again a different greenish-blue color of the copper phosphate that formed. Fifth from the left in the Erlenmeyer flask, we have our still ongoing reaction of 5% acetic acid as vinegar, hydrogen peroxide, and copper metal in the form of lathe turnings, giving us copper acetate. And last, number six, at the extreme right in the beaker. Again, 5% acetic acid as white vinegar, copper carbonate was added, and then a few drops of hydrogen peroxide to speed up the reaction. I should point out on this last one that if you add too much peroxide, especially if it's very strong peroxide like the 30% that I use, you will burn your copper carbonate and it'll turn into uh, brownish black copper oxide and you will not get the formation of any uh, copper acetate. So go light on the peroxide or use 3% peroxide from the drugstore. Add it dropwise slowly and you will get copper acetate.